I hate those kinds of phrases that become so popular, and, and, they're, and they're very common. Now we have people talking about everything happens for a reason. No, it doesn't. Where did you get everything happens for a reason? That's not a biblical truth. No, pastor, I heard you preach from Romans 8, 28. Yes, I preach from Romans 28, and I still say everything doesn't happen for a reason. Why? Because Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to who? Thank you, Bible readers. Not to everybody, but for them or those, depending on what translation you have, for those or for them who love God and who are called according to his purpose. And even though it says that, it doesn't say that about everything being something that should have happened. It says, and we know that all things work together. Do you see the difference? God didn't want, yeah, everything happens for a reason. The Bible doesn't support that. Some stuff just happens. Yes, yes. It wasn't a reason that God ordained. Right. When you see tragedies all over the world, when you see these random shootings and you see innocent children being shot in a drive-by and you see all kind of foolishness and wars and rumors of wars, that stuff doesn't happen for a reason. It's not something, see, when people say everything happens for a reason, they're hearkening to some, some uh, religious idea without actually forming a, a causation to it. They, and people are becoming comfortable today talking about the universe did this and that. Have you noticed this? The universe, I hope the universe, what? The universe is not a being? that can make decisions, the universe is the created. Amen. We need to get to know the creator. Amen. It's the created. Now, I got atheist friends. Hopefully, you have some too. I hope you don't only deal with the saints. We're supposed to be salt and light. So I hope you have, you have some folk who are atheists or agnostic and all of that in your life. You need to be comfortable with that. Jesus was comfortable with them. You need to be comfortable too. And I got some atheist friends and they do not accept the premise that, uh, that you know, there is a being, a supreme being and all that. One time I had to talk with one. I said, well, look, respectfully, let me just help you understand something. You have to have more faith to believe what you do than I have to have to believe what I do. So what you talking about? I said, well, I believe that in the beginning, God. And when you ask me, how do you know there's a God? He's revealed himself first in the universe in creation, then in conscience, and ultimately he revealed himself in Christ. Amen. And I can give you the reasons for my faith. So I have a reasonable faith that there is a supernatural other being, not us, there is one who is from everlasting to everlasting. You can't wrap your mind around that because he's other. He's not us. We have a beginning and an end. He doesn't. And that, that gives you a problem. I get it. But I have faith that that being re revealed himself in creation, in conscience, and ult ultimately in Christ. Here's what you have to believe. You have to believe in the beginning, bang, and you can't explain where the stuff came from that banged. So just while we're having a respectful conversation, I don't, I don't fall out with Pope. It's not my job to get mad at you while we talk. I know what you believe. I've been to school. I studied all of that. I get it. But at the end of the day, you can't explain. You believe in a Big Bang. You believe in evolution, but you can't explain where the stuff came from that evolved. I said, and the real problem you have is not only that nothing, that something, everything came from nothing. Not only do you believe that, but you believe that the everything that came from the nothing had somehow there were forces in it that gave it life. And the life then took all kinds of different forms, including the form of us. 
so that we could stand here and talk about we don't believe in what formed us. So, I just, I, I'm uncomfortable. I can have a respectful conversation. Just don't call me stupid because I believe in, in the beginning God. Don't say I'm unintelligent because I believe in the beginning God. Because I'm not going to call you unintelligent even though you believe in the beginning bang and you can't tell me where the stuff came from that banged. You got to get used to knowing how to defend your faith respectfully. I learned it when I was in college. I went to University of Pennsylvania, Ivy League school uh, there in Philly. And I went, and so I know how this works. I had a backslidden professor, my first uh, uh, pro religion professor at Penn was a backslidden preacher. He went to college and grad school, got a THD, a doctor of theology, all of that as a preacher. But somewhere along the line, he lost his faith. And by the time he had his THD and had spent all these years studying and preparing, he decided he did not believe in Christ and he did not and all that. He said, I'm still, he said, I'm agnostic. I don't know everything. I, I can't figure it all out, but I no longer accept that Christ is the Savior that I grew up preaching and um, believing in and all that. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'll pray for you. He said, but I had so much education in religion and preparing for ministry and all all these years had gone by and I got all these degrees. He says, so I said, I got to do something to make a living with this stuff. And so I decided to become a religion professor. And then he decided that his job was to go to a school like Penn and take all us little rookie Christians and to try to upset our faith. And he spent every class, he was in on it. And if you believe this, he was just walking us through. I'm glad I went through that. Because it taught me some things. I remember calling one of my, my mentors, uh, just saying, oh, man, my, my professor, he keep giving me back my papers with all this red, talking about you're subjective. I'm trying to get you to be objective. And I said, I'm just tired of this. I don't know what to do with this. He said, tell him he's subjective too. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He's trying to make you believe that the only way to be, be objective is to begin at the place that you don't believe in a supreme being. And he said, you have to tell him, no, you're starting from a place of subjective because you're believing that there is no supreme being. And so we're both got, we got to start from somewhere. And so you got to believe what you believe, that's fine, but don't beat me up because I'm starting from a premise of faith. I have intelligent reasons. I have reasons for believing what I do. And I struggled all the way through, but thank God that uh, he and I didn't hurt each other and we got on through there. My point is, all this, it is what it is, and everything happens for a reason. Stop buying into stuff that's not supported in Scripture. Get into your word and let the word inform you that God says everything that happens doesn't necessarily have a reason behind it, but we have a reasonable God who says, if you love me and you're called according to my purpose, I'll make everything that happens, even if the stuff in your life didn't make sense. God said, I will bless you despite senseless stuff and that's what you and I have to learn hey thanks so much for viewing today I hope you were blessed listen if you want to receive all of the videos that we post simply subscribe by pressing the button on your screen we'd also like to encourage you to share this information with others so that they too can be blessed God bless you and we'll talk to you soon